um, playing with data for far too long, um, playing with mostly with Microsoft products. I've got a YouTube. Um, they're not organized as in I do a regular slot out, but I do try to get one or two videos out every couple of weeks. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go and fetch a web table. We'll, we'll add some parameters. We'll convert it into a function. And then we'll have a look at how we fetch that into multiple pages. Um, and according to time goes, I'll just do another example at the end as well. So let's get straight on to the demo. Now, we're going to get our data from a website. This website here. Now, unfortunately, we haven't got any F1 races this year. So we're going to have to use last year's results. So this is what we're going to work work from. And I'm going to go to Australia. And there we are. We've got the results for every driver in Australia. So let's go for um, into Power BI. And we're going to go and do a get data. And we're going to do get data web. And so let's just go back to there. Take that URL. And into here and let's click OK. Give it a moment. It will look through the page and find find the best web page, find the, the tables it thinks are useful. Um, regularly, they're not what I want, so I'm going to go to add the table using examples. And in this top part, it will show the web page in a moment. There we go. Um, let's just accept cookies. And if I scroll down a bit, I can see the data. OK, so in here, I'm going to put in the data from there. So I'm going to go with this being the position. And I can type in, I want that to be a number one from there. So we're going to go with number one. And then I want that one to be a number two. And there you are, it guesses by, by putting in a couple. I'm then going to go into, into here. And I'm going to put in the driver. Now I'm not going to go for putting in the names because I'm, I'm going to misspell them. So I just want the shortened versions of the names. So if you follow F1 at all, you'll know that they all have a three letter um, code. So there you are. That's the one for Bottas. And Hamilton. Laura, they shortly may interrupt. Can you please mute the Teams window on the right bottom so everybody can see your screen there properly? Oh, sorry. My apologies. Let me minimize that. Sorry, my apologies. I always no worries. Thanks. Don't get to do that. So let's put in Hamilton into there. And once you put in a couple, it usually works it out. OK, um, even though that data is not shown, it's in a hidden column in on that website. And let's put in what car they're driving just to give us a bit more data. OK, and into there, that's going to be a Mercedes. And they on that one, it managed to work it out and to guess. So that's given us three columns. Let's click OK. And let's click transform data. And up comes Power Query. So Power Query has, has created me a little a little query down the side here. I'm going to call this race results. So if we go back up to the source step and press the cogwheel, it shows us the URL that we're being used. Now I've got in there, I've got a, a year, I've got a race number, and I've got a race name. Okay. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to move to the advanced. And I'm going to put split this up into different parameters. OK, now I've got it so that I can go new parameters straight away here. Um, there's a tick box in options, which I'll show in a moment, which unless you've already got a parameter there, um, sometimes it won't let you do the new parameter. So we're going to go for a new parameter. I'm going to put in race year now because it's part of it's going to be made into part of a string. You've got to make sure the type is text. And let's put in 2019. And click OK. And so that is going to take out. So I'm just going to break this down, take out that. Add a part. To take off the year, the, the one at the beginning, and we just slowly work through it. I'm just going to quickly take that out and add in another part, another parameter. Race number, don't be tempted by making it anything other than text or it won't work. Add a part, paste in that part that I got rid of. That's just going to be a forward slash, and then it's going to be the race name. So I'm just going to put the forward slash in and add in another parameter. Last one. OK, and that's going to be text again, and it's going to be Australia, and I'm going to Oh no, I've spelt it right. Oh no, that's not double A. Click OK. Add the last part, which is forward slash race result. OK. And it gives you a bit of the a URL preview down the bottom here. Let's click OK. And there you are. It's created me the parameters. And I've got my race result being put up to there. OK, so now the next part is going to be let's go for um, converting that into a. Converting converting that into a um, function, so really simple. Right click on that query and we can go create function. And let's give it a name. So fn get race results. Click OK. And there you are. I've got. Um, I've, I've, I've got my um, parameters there, so I can actually put in. So let's put in 2019. Let's put in 1001. And that was Bahrain. And invoke and hopefully there you are there are the results um, Lewis Hamilton won that race um, and, and Bolas came second okay so that's done that part now we've got a couple we've got a couple of options here we could go for um, I bring in a list of races and we can get it from there um, but actually, it's got to be on the site that this, these details are there. So let's go back to the site for a sec. And let's go back up to here. Oops, got that wrong. Let's go to the schedule. I knew I've got that. I knew I was going to get that URL wrong. Let's go back one more. There we are. It's races. That's what I needed to get. So here are. No, that's the Australian one. I don't want the Australian one. I want the races. Give me the races. Schedule. Nope, sorry, my apologies. That is the one that I want. Okay, so that's the, the page. It's got the list of the races there. 
So if I copy that one and come back into here, let's do a new source. And we're going to go for web. And let's put in that URL. And click OK. And let's do a quick add table using examples because it doesn't quite give what I want. Now, there's multiple ways you could, we, we could have done this one. Um, the first example could be simpler if I use this URL slightly easier. But when I first did this examples, that's what I came up with. So we're going to go with this one. Um, and if I type in the number of thousand, it'll show you there is the URL to all the race results. So if I just pick Australia at the top there and press return, and then into this one, put 1001. There we are, there's Bahrain. Press return, and they are. it fetches them all. Let's also bring in, because the races have got dates. So Australia was the 17th of March. And they are, it's put all the other ones in, and let's click OK. So this is going to be races. So we could have actually in, done the invoke function just using that whole URL, but I'm just going to do a quick split so it fits what we've done previously. So I'm just going to do a quick split of this column here. So if I go to add column and we go for extract um, text between delimiters. Now you can do the counting across there, but I happen to know that um, we're going to go for forward slashes and we're going to go for forward slash again. And under advanced options, I can count through and it's the fourth one um, and click OK. And they are we get the race number. So let's just quickly tweak the M code at the top there to say race number. And then let's do the same thing again. And it's exactly the same, except this time the number is five. Oops. The number is five. And we click OK. And I'm just going to change that M code at the top there to say. race name okay now that that works that works pretty well that gives me the that gives me a whole year's worth don't worry we're not going to invoke it on a whole year because you know what that takes that takes 30 minutes to refresh um, but what I can do over here is I can at this source here I can turn around and say well do you know what we've got a we've got a, a number in there that I want to be able to do 2018 as well so we're just going to put in a advanced and I'm going to bring in my parameter race year. And let's take out that part. And let's click OK. And then so if I had a list of years, I could then do multiple years. So let's just quickly show how we would do that. Um, so if I go for a blank query. I'm going to put into here equals um, a function called list numbers. So list dot numbers. And ask do you, what number do you want to start at? Well, let's just try 2018. Let's just prove it works. 2018 and let's just do two years and we convert that to a table
and I make that in and I call that race year. And when I go to um, I'm going to add a column and I'm going to invoke custom. I haven't made that into a function yet. My apologies. So this one here we're going to make into a function So create function. And I'm going to call it um, FN get races. And this one here, we're going to invoke a custom. We're going to invoke the function. Uh, I don't care about the column name because actually it's not going to stay around very long. Um, we're going to do get races. Uh, the race year is a column. And it comes from that one there and we click OK. We've got an error. That's because I forgot to change this column back to being text. So let's just go up one part there. And let's put into that. Let's make that text. It'll insert a step. So there we are, we get our table. We can do a quick expand there. Let's take out the use original name because I don't want that. But they are, I'll keep those columns. Oh, I forgot to rename column one. Never mind. We can, we can rename it here. So there we are. I've got my race year. I've got my, let's just quickly change that while I remember. So I've got my, I've got my columns there. Now, one thing to be aware of is when you do this, the columns come through, not always with a type. So to avoid the next one giving me an error, I'm just going to change that to be text. And I'm going to change that to be text. Now, I am very aware of time on this particular one. If I did, if I did invoke the next function, it would take a good 45 minutes. Um, web pages are not a fast data source. So I'm just going to restrict this down to just being Australia. because I think that'll give me two races. There we go. There's my two races in the two different years. Um, and then let's invoke our custom fun our custom function. That hasn't done what I I've got a race year. I've got a race number. I have got it. invoke my custom function. Um, get race results. So my race year is going to be a race year. Race number. Race name. And click OK. And off it will go and get those two pages of results. OK, if I click and expand there. Oops, I do want all of them. It's that tick box I want to keep off and then click OK. And there we go. We've got our results for the two years for that race. We could have expanded that to be all the races for over. I think it, I think the, the page stays the same format for at least um, two or three years going backwards. So any questions? Everybody's really quiet. That's scary. So far, there are no questions in the chat. There was one, but it's already uh, answered by Nikki. Thank you. Brilliant. OK, so. Working, working with. So obviously we need to rename some of these, re rename some of these ones to be able to put in. Um, can't call it race results. I called something else race results. Um, race positions okay um that invoked function there i'm going to delete ah thank you for, thank you thank you very much um dominic um you're right so occasionally when you go to do it um 
in case when you go to do it that it actually it doesn't give you the parameters option unless you've already got parameters set up. But one of the things you can do is if I go to options and settings and I go to options. I got to remember where it is. So there is in. Power Query Editor um, always allow parameterization in this part here by default. It's ticked off, OK? Um, which means if there are no parameters, it doesn't give you the drop down boxes. So if I turn that if I turn that off, um, I've already got parameters. So the boxes, so when I do. So when, so when I do the um, going back into the original query here and I go to the source, if you're not getting these drop down boxes at the side, that's because you haven't got parameterization turned on. OK. One thing to be aware of in using this automated method of making functions is to not go to there's a function it creates and you can go to the advanced editor. But it will warn you, don't edit this function because this function is linked back to um, this query and you update that query, it updates the function for you. If you go and edit that function, that link will be broken. So the function won't get updated on you tweaking the query that created that function. Dora, there's a question uh, asked by uh, Jeroen. Uh, would you prefer to make uh, this data model into a dimensional model or stick with the table before creating it in the reward? OK, I'm going to have to pass that back to somebody else because I, I don't understand the question. Uh, what he's actually asking if you prefer to keep the results uh, uh, as one table in your model, in your Power BI model. Uh, or want to uh, model it down to a star schema or a snowflake schema? Oh, OK, OK, yeah, no. So once I've once I've got my. Um, so once I, I've, I've got this kind of this kind of results, there's obviously we there's obviously a, a pretty good reason to um, once you get to thousands of results here, I've got race data being repeated all over the place here. Um, the URL column, I don't, I don't think I need anyway. Um, so you could, yes, take this normalize it down so that actually you end up with a race number and um, a driver and result. Um, I was taking that the and the and the driver and what car they drive. And actually, it, it varies per year for some of the drivers, so you might not. So you can't just have a driver and a team put next to it. So you might have to be a bit careful about drivers who do move. Um, and you do get the odd driver who drives um, for one race which just computes all the data. Um, so, yeah, I would pull this out probably and make this more into a bit of a star schema um, so that the driver information I'm putting somewhere separately probably because I, I, you, you probably would like the driver name. But we can pull that off a site. We can pull that from a site or, or have the data separate. So actually, yes, you really want driver position and a race ID. So, yeah, I would I would pull out. Um, pull out these columns so my so that I've got my my race date net number etc down to a race ID. It, does that answer the does that answer the question? Joan? I think so. Um, Jeroen, if you have any additional question, feel free to uh, unmute yourself for a second. My demo's gone a little faster than normal. I obviously <laughs> I obviously demo faster when I'm doing it virtually. No worries, no worries. Is there other, any other questions I, at this moment? Feel free to unmute yourself and uh, ask uh, Laura directly. Has anyone else used? Um, uh, has anybody else got any business cases for fetching web data? Yeah, I can answer that as well. I, I actually had one, uh, for example, uh, exchange rates. Uh, if you want to use the public exchange exchange rates, there's also something that's available online. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Rishi's Rishi's put up the same thing. Um, getting yeah. yeah, getting currencies is is always a good one. 
Yep, indeed. Um, oh, someone someone was putting up the a COVID nineteen data from GitHub. Um, I uh, um going for um bizarre bits of fun data. Um, there was a when when we had trains running. We don't have many trains running at the minute. Um, but you could the, the there was train data every day. Uh, that you could get out as to how well the trains were running on certain days. Mm -hmm. um, that, that was an interesting set of data. And there, there are all sorts of sets of data that are available out there that you can do similar kind of tricks with it. Yeah. There's actually a, a great uh, or a, a large amount of data out there in a, that you're probably not even aware of that you can start using and combining with your own data set, of course, in Power BI. Andrew, I like that one. Um, I, I like the idea of getting public bank holidays because that'd be quite a good one for calendars, wouldn't it? Farm milk prices, wow, bizarre <laughs> one. At least we're getting creative here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think farm milk prices has to be kind of the the the, the oddest one so far. <laughs> I used actually the same connector or just the web connector to uh, uh, fetch data for my uh, own Strava account uh, for all my bike rides. Uh, I know that there is a custom connector out there, but uh, sometimes it's fun to do it yourself as well. Yep, yep. Gives you a little bit, gives you a little bit more control and gives you a bit of kind of sense of achievement. We all need that. Indeed, indeed. If there are no further questions, uh, we can actually actually also finish up this presentation and. Uh, Give everybody a short break. Can you use it on web pages you need to log on to? Unfortunately, no. Um, unfortunately, web pages um, at the moment, and uh, I've not heard anything they're going to change it, but um, it has to be anonymous, which is a pain in the neck. Unless you know any different, Mark. Yeah, I used for the um, Sharpa one there, and you need to sign in. And what I did there is uh, using the um, API key in the URL uh, string. Oh, okay. But if you really need to authenticate with a OAuth or a, a Windows credentials or anything, that doesn't work indeed. I had an interesting, I had an interesting one of um, a system that did an, a daily export of data in HTML format. Um, we found a way around it to avoid having to use the the um, the login, but it was pretty horrific. And not yeah. something that I'd like to demo particularly very often because it, it was a bit of a kind of let's hope it keeps working. Okay. If there are no further questions, uh, I think we can finish this presentation and then uh, oh, there is another one. Every time I say it, there is a new question raised. That's good. Uh, didn't you filter the data set only for Australia? Uh, didn't you say that you? Did that for okay. performance reasons? Um, uh, to tell to tell you the truth, to tell you the truth, thought I probably should have done it when I started when I when I opened up. Um, yes, I could have done for more races. I think the last time I did it, I did it for three years, and it took forty five. It took forty five minutes to fetch it all, um, because it goes and fetches each web page individually. Okay. Um, can you bring through image you are? So one of the one of the updates they brought in. Um, I think it was about six months ago, was to include being able to do the, U the URLs. So if you've got images in there that have got URLs, then yeah, you can bring. So the, the URL column that I brought through, that was in there. Um, so the, the URL column, I think you can still see on the screen. Um, so you could get image URLs as well. Um, on my blog, I've I've not got this example exactly. I think I've got a weather example instead. Um, but we've got the same. I, I, I've I've got demos out there that are very similar. Um, so we then there's a whole walkthrough in there of creating functions. Also, Chris Webb does some great examples um, of of how to do this as well. Um, and and for everybody that's here, I've I've seen some of Mary's demos. It is really worth staying. Um, she does a fantastic demo. We're all looking forward to it, I think. 
Great. Last time I saw her do a demo, she got a round of applause. <laughs> That's how it should be. It's a little bit harder to give you applause for uh, for your great presentation right now, but um, it will be one big mess if we all mute. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Let's not do that. Let's not no. let, let's, let's not break teams. No, indeed. Um, okay, thanks, Laura. Thanks for your presentation. Uh, it was a great demo, and uh, I see a lot of uh, people in the chat liked it too. So uh, thank you very much. Cool. Um, thank you so, for coming, guys. And yeah, I'm, sure. I'm staying around for Mary's. Great. So uh, uh, let me drop your screen sharing and pop on mine. And, uh, in another 10 minutes, uh, we will start Mary your presentation um, around uh, tips and tricks with Power Query. So uh, hang around and uh, get yourself a coffee or a, a quick bite, and we will back. Uh, we'll be back in a second. <laughs>